Hey, good morning. Welcome to our online service. We're so glad that you're tuned in with us today. Let's go ahead and let's start off with a word of prayer. Let's anchor ourselves in Jesus as we start this service. Father, we just thank you so much for gathering us together online. And we just pray that you would guide this time and fill us with your spirit as we are gathered together. I just pray for all those things that we're navigating in our lives. Lord, I just pray for inspiration, revelation, wisdom, and kindness to navigate We pray that in this time that you would inspire us with your hope. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A couple of announcements before we get started with the worship and song. I wanted to remind you to check in on the Church Center app. It really does help us to keep track of who's coming to our online service. And I wanted to say, even if you're watching this service later in the day, you can check in all the way up until 9 p.m. We just want to know who's coming to our service. So please take a moment, if you haven't done so already, check in on the Church Center app. I also wanted to remind you that you could give safely and quickly on the Church Center app or online at vineyardofharvest.org slash give. I want to tell you, you're making a difference to broaden the kingdom of God, especially in these times. Thank you for those who are giving, and we are making a difference to build the kingdom of God. Lastly, I wanted to encourage you to sign up for a small group if you haven't done so already. It really is important to be together as church community, fellowshipping together, praying for each other. So you can sign up for a small group at vineyardofharvest.org slash groups or on our church center app. So I hope that you can sign up and we can encourage one another this coming quarter. Let's now take this time. Let's worship the Lord in song as our worship team leads us. Hey. 
cleanse me from my You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, I 
So our vision for 2021 is extend an invitation. We're extending invitations to others, invite them into relationship with Jesus Christ. As part of that invitation, we are extending an invitation to them to 
enter into wise living. That's our sermon series that we're in right now. We're in the book of James. The book of James offers a lot of practical wisdom on how to navigate various nuances of life. And today, the sermon title is Fiery Words. And we're in James chapter 3, verses 3 through 6. Now, along the lines of fiery words or fires, I wanted to start off with a question. So see if you know the answer to this question. What is the biggest cause of fatal fires in the U.S.? A couple of choices. A, cooking. B, heating equipment. C, cigarettes. D, arson. What would you say is the biggest cause of fatal fires in our country? Ready for the answer? The answer is cigarettes. Now, I wanted to say when people are throwing their cigarette butts um, off to the side, they're not purposely trying to start fires. They're not trying to purposely kill people, right? That would be arson, and that's another category. But they're just casually throwing it off, thinking that it's already, it's already out, it's not going to cause any harm, and they toss it off to the side, um, and it ends up causing fatal fires. Sometimes our words could end up being like that, where we casually toss around our words, we say different things, we might not mean any harm by it, but it ends up causing fatal fires. It ends up bringing death, even. Death to people's souls, as we just carelessly toss our words around. The Bible actually gives an illustration like this, and we're going to Scripture today to see that illustration. The question we're answering today from the book of James, chapter 3, is what does God say about the words that come out of our mouths? He has some important words of wisdom some words for wise living about the words that come out of our mouth. So let's read this passage together. James chapter 3, 3 through 6. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Let's start off in verses 5 through 6, and I'm going to read verses 5 through 6 again. This time I'm going to read it in the message paraphrase translation. I think it'll bring even just a little more clarity to what James is trying to convey here. Verses 5 through 6, message translation. It only takes a spark, remember, to set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of our mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony to chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with it. Smoke right from the pit of hell. Well, there's strong words here. James is painting a very grim picture when we carelessly toss around our words. We misplace our words. We use our words in a, in a wrong way and end up causing a forest fire. Let me put it like this for point number one. What does God say about the words that come out of our mouths? Point number one, we need to be careful lest our words cause a forest fire. Really, I think the opening illustration conveys what James is trying to say. Sometimes we don't mean anything by our words. We just say different things, and it ends up hurting people. And, and James is really pointing it out with some strong words, with a strong imagery, to be extremely careful about our words. And our words could end up really hurting others. And so James is bringing a strong exhortation to be extra careful about our words. You know, I just want to share a little bit more vulnerably here because I know that you will relate. I know that, especially in these times that we're living in, in the dynamic that we find ourselves in, in this time of history, that this word is extremely important for us to take to heart and for us to make some adjustments in our lives about lest we start hurting people with our words. For me, in this work from home dynamic and with the kids at home, 24 seven, I just wanna be honest. I've found myself throwing around words and I've had to apologize to my family, not once or twice or three times, but you know, several times. 
because of some wrong words that I say. And I, I think that especially in this dynamic of this crazy situations that we are finding ourselves in today, we need to be extra careful about our words and ask God to help us in particular, particularly this area of our tongues and, and our words, lest we start causing forest fires. I think about our work situations. And by the way, I, as you know, I work, I work in a godly environment. And, but, I, but still, I find myself with all the high stress that's going on right now in, in work situations, in meetings, in conversations, that, again, I've had to be really careful about my words with, with what I'm saying, especially with the tensions that are high and, and trying to figure things out and, and with the confusion and all, and all that's going about. God calls us to be extra careful, especially in these times. I think about our political situation. I think, I think about social media and how we could, if I can put it this way, carelessly throw around our words on social media or in other conversations about political matters. And as, this, as James is pointing out, the whole world could start going up in smoke and we could go up in smoke with it when we throw around our words talking about political situations. God calls us to be extra careful about our words lest we cause some forest fires around us, especially amongst our loved ones. So you might say, well, okay, we, I don't want to be causing forest fires. Well, what's the solution? Is there something practical that I can do? What can we do to not cause forest fires? So let's keep on reading in verse 4. It says this, very practical. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are seared by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Our words could be like small rudders, a very small part of the ship but it turns the whole ship to go in the right direction. Sometimes we can think about our words as just, just a simple phrase that we would say to somebody else, but it could be extremely powerful to turn the whole situation, to bless that person. Let me put it like this for point number two. What does God say about the words that come out of our mouths? Point number two, our so-called, quote-unquote, small words can turn big situations around toward the right direction. Let me give you an example from my own life. And I think that this word is just so true for us, especially in these times. So in 2017, our church was going through transition. Some of you remember, uh, we were um, making changes to position for, uh, ourselves for the future. And that meant more leadership for me, more responsibilities for me. And so it was definitely a transition personally for me. Um, and, and then also in our movement, in the Vineyard Movement, opportunities were opening uh, for me to do different things in, in the movement uh, around 2017. And so there was stuff that was going on in the local church, there was stuff that was going on outside of the church. And, and so there was just uh, a lot of weight that I was experiencing. And also I was wondering, are, are these the things that God's calling me to do? And can I even do these things if God's calling me to it? And so there was weight, there was doubt, honestly. And so... In 2017, in the summer, uh, we, I ended up at the National Conference, at the Vineyard National Conference over at the Anaheim Vineyard. And at the Anaheim Vineyard, in the hallway, I ran into Pastor Jim. Now, Pastor Jim is a longtime friend of VOH. He's, fr he's originally from the La Habra Vineyard, and the La Habra Vineyard helped our church get started and was just extremely kind and gracious to our church, especially in the early years. Now, I don't know Pastor Jim really well, but he knows of me for, for that whole time. So, so at that point, he had known, me, uh, known of me and known me a bit for 17 years and seen me growing up in the ministry. And so when he passed by me in the hallway, he had known what was, what was going on in our local church a little bit. He'd known about some roles that were opening up for me in, in the broader vineyard. And in the hallway, he had a very short conversation with me. With me. And he said to me, Dennis, wow, it just, you've come such a long way. And Dennis, I could see you one day just leading this whole thing. Now, I didn't take him literally at that. And I don't think he meant that literally, but he meant that to just to be extremely affirming to me. A very short conversation, if I could put it like this, small words in the hallway at a, at a conference. And those words, it's four years later, I still remember them. I took them to heart. Sometimes it could be small words that could change the whole direction. We're bringing someone from doubt, from weight, from pressure, and bringing them into light. We could speak words that aren't causing forest fires, but are actually firing up someone's soul. 
And it could be just small words, simple words, short phrases, an email, a text. Mother Teresa puts it like this. I love how she puts it. Kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. Are there some short words, some small words, quote unquote, that you could say to someone this coming week that bring life to them, that fires up their soul? Let's not cause forest fires, but let's fire up people's souls. Let's bring them from stress and weight and doubt into life. I have a challenge for you this week. And really, it's not my challenge. This is a challenge from the Word of God. This is the challenge that James is issuing to us. Let's find some ways that we could speak even just some small words to someone. Maybe it's going to be a simple text that you're going to send someone, a one-sentence, a two-sentence text, just to encourage someone this week. Maybe a short phone call, maybe a five-minute phone call where you just call someone up just to tell them that you're thinking of them, to pray for them. Maybe it's going to be a short conversation like Pastor Jim had with me where you're just going to speak some life to someone. Let's find some opportunities this week to speak some small words, to be like the rudder that turns the whole ship in the right direction. Now, you might wonder, okay, how am I going to ensure that I'm not causing forest fires, but that I am speaking fiery words to fire up someone's soul? And I think that that James has some words about that. So let's read verse 3. It says this. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. If I can put it like this, we put something into an animal to help bring them into the right direction. We're animals too, right? We're humans. We're animals. And actually, Jesus had a very similar word for us. So these are the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 6. Jesus said this, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So for us humans, it's not putting something into our mouths. It's putting something into our hearts. As we fill our hearts with good inputs, Jesus said that good is going to start flowing out of the mouths. We're going to start speaking words that fire up people's souls. We're going to start speaking the so-called small words that turn the direction into the right direction for people. Now, um, let me put it like this for point number three. What does God say about the words that come out of our mouths? Point number three, what we put into our hearts determines what comes out of our mouths. Let me give kind of a gross illustration here, but I give this illustration, please bear with it, because I think it helps convey what James and Jesus were trying to get across. Have you ever had food poisoning where you put some bad, rotten food into your system? What comes out? It's not good that comes out. It's bad that comes out, right? But when we put good into our system, good food into our system, good inputs into our system, what comes out, it changes everything. It changes everything about how we function in every single way, in in, in just our physical, but also our spiritual, also our emotional, also our mental. And James and Jesus are saying this to us. Make sure we need to be careful to put good into our hearts, into our systems, that good starts flowing out of our mouths. Now, would you agree that this is a good word for the times that we're living in? I'm, again, I'm going to speak personally here, but I think that you will relate and find a way to, to implement this into your own life. I think about right now the dynamic that we're living in, and when I think about, for me, I need to reflect. I literally need to sit down and reflect sometimes. Now, how, much, how much of the news am I taking in? How much of, of the COVID numbers am I taking in and taking to heart? How much is it that I'm, I'm taking in fear from 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 What's, what's happening in the media or social media or just, just around us, and I'm filling my heart with that. Am I filling my heart with fear or am I filling my heart with God's word, God's truth, God's love, that good starts flowing out of my mouth and out of my whole system? I think all of us need to take inventory, especially in these times, to make sure that the inputs that we're taking in are good and godly. It's, it's truth and it's love that flows from the Father. Now, there's a million applications that you could have for this. I want to say one thing about our devotional plan that we started uh, back earlier in the year, uh, the He Reached Truth app and She Reached Truth app. It actually ends today, the plan that we're on. It ends today. But tomorrow, we're going to start a new plan. And I want to encourage you, if you don't have a devotional plan yet, or maybe you were doing the plan that we were on just before, I want to encourage you to join up in this next plan. We're going to be going through the book of Esther. And we're going to be two weeks in the book of Esther and fill ourselves with God's truth 
God's word, filling our hearts with the good inputs from scripture, that good words start flowing out of our mouths. Now, all the instructions are here on this graphic or on, on social media or on an online bulletin of how to sign up for this devotional plan on the He Reads Truth or She Reads Truth app. Or if you're already signed up, obviously you don't need to sign up again, just join this next plan. But I wanna encourage you, whatever way that you have to get God's word into your life, this is what James and Jesus are encouraging us in. Our words matter. We don't wanna carelessly throw around the cigarette butts and start causing forest fires. And the way that we would ensure that we start firing up people's souls in the right direction is that we fill ourselves with good input. And the devotional plan that we have, I think is a great way for us. But whatever way that you have, let's fill ourselves with God's truth. Let me close with one last mental picture for you. I already shared about my interaction with Pastor Jim and his so-called small words bringing me into the right direction. I could also this morning share with you some horrific experiences that I had where some people were carelessly throwing around words that really damaged me. Now, of course, we need to forgive. We need to move on. We need to um, forgive the people and not hold the bitterness. But I just want to share that it does matter when people are carelessly throwing around words. It could really damage our souls. And I want to encourage us this week. We have a great opportunity not to damage people's souls, but to speak the small words that light the fires in people's souls, that bring them into the right direction. Can you imagine this week, if we as a church, we filled ourselves on God's word, God's truth, God's love, and we just started speaking words of life to people around us this coming week, we would have so much impact for the glory of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God would break in all around us. Let's this week fill ourselves with God's truth, God's love, God's word, and start speaking words of life to other people. We always close our sermon time with a reflection prompt, and this is the reflection prompt for today in response to God's word. How can I fill my heart with good, godly inputs that life-giving words would flow out of my mouth this week to others? Let's take about a minute and a half, some worship music that's gonna play in the background. Let's reflect on God's word. What is Holy Spirit speaking to you through his word today? Before we close with the benediction, the blessing, I just wanted to mention one word that our prayer team got. Our prayer team prays during the week. They got this one word that I think is very applicable to today's message. They got a word about baptism of love, a fresh baptism of love. What a great word for us as we are thinking about how we can give loving words to other people. Let's be filled, let's be baptized with a fresh baptism of God's love upon us. Let's pray together. If you feel comfortable, put your hands out, palms up to heaven. Receive God's blessing as we close out. Father, I pray for fresh baptisms of love. Fill us with your love this week. That our hearts will be so full of your love that our mouths would speak 
words of love to those who are around us. Help us in this. Lord, guide us as we navigate various different challenges this week. Fill us with your wisdom, with your kindness, with your courage. I pray your blessings upon each person and each family represented. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you guys. Have a great week, and I'll see you next Sunday. Thank you.